right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another episode of Mindless Horror Podcast. This is a special one. Here with, of course, Sammy. The, so squad? The co-host right there. Uh, but this is a special one, man. This is a, an event that I actually found through Instagram when scrolling through stories one day. And I saw this event, and I've been passing around the, wor- the word as much as possible. Um, cause a lot of people had hit me up about this event. A lot of people had told me like, what the hell is this thing? Like what's going on? I'm like, this is a new, I want to say this is your first, you guys, you're doing something major, right? This is our first year doing a, a horror event, but right. especially not just horror, but event of this capacity. Yeah. Horror definitely event, a big, right? big event. And today we are joined, yeah. obviously the event Hellfest. Welcome to Hellfest. Um, Gentlemen, how you guys doing? These are the two people, the masterminds behind Welcome to Hellfest. So how you guys doing today? Doing well. Thank you for having us. Oh, man. You're welcome. Yeah, yeah excited yeah, to I give really you some insight that. what so, to expect. Honor. Sure. It's, uh, no, I, uh, like, like I said, man, I discovered this through Instagram, through an ad, and I was immediately drawn to it. I was like, this is going to, this sounds cool. This is going to be dope. There's not a lot obviously going on this year and i need to still get my haunt fix i need to still get my yeah tape. definitely and that's where we come in yeah, yeah. um yeah, man. that's what the goal is right yeah definitely and i when i saw this the first thing that came to mind was of course that movie hellfest yeah um i for one i know it, the movie didn't get a lot of praise but i actually enjoyed that movie i really i love that movie yeah, yeah i think that was a great movie it, it was a interesting concept for a movie because you had this traveling haunt but then you had this killer within the haunt that was actually killing the guest which i thought was cool um, right the end is what got me though going right? back home to his sound family I yeah know, that it was, was like what, what the hell's going on <laughs> that was my favorite part yeah that was awesome yeah um so when i saw this event i was like i have to go there i have to see what's up i love the motto behind it music meets horror um yeah two of my favorite things right there I love music, I love horror. So immediately I was drawn to it. So let's start from the beginning. What made you want to pursue this? Sure. Um, well, I mean, essentially, um, Globe Worldwide, the company behind it, were um, music before anything, so music and creative arts. Um, essentially, we do that. We, we throw events that consist of uh, clothing, exquisite cuisine, arts, fashion, Um, things of that sort. We bring it into one environment where people can kind of interact, network, and kind of expand their business. That's our concept. Um, Obviously, this year, not, you know, having that these these bigger corporations play their part. I'm a really big horror fanatic myself. So when I found out that, um, or when we found out, you know, Universal, not Scary Farm, like all these bigger corporations weren't going to be operating, immediately it hit me, like, we need to have our own, like, our own haunt, our own, like, Halloween Fest is the perfect time to do it. Um, we have the manpower, the creativity, like we have everything we need really to throw a successful on location. So that was like the, that was honestly like the push, the drive to go ahead and do it. I think we put on together the whole concept with the location and our team within maybe two, three weeks. Um, and then it's been, we've been maybe two months in the works. So it was a very, it was a very spontaneous, um, decision to make um but i'm super glad we did it things are falling into place very well um shoot we're really excited to show the concept that we're bringing the whole music meets horror um we definitely feel like it's a unique it's a unique concept the event itself um what we're gonna have to offer and yeah i mean if anything if lawrence you want to add anything into into that yeah we're just excited to showcase like what we got we've been in the creating and all the partners that we have with us uh, within this event. Um, yeah, so we have a lot of people on board that's really supporting us and um, just excited to showcase it to the public what we've been working on. Yeah. Right. No, I, I yeah, feel that. The majority of everything. I like that, man. I, and I'm loving the promo to it. The promos are not only like, I love the reality meets fiction man that's one of my favorite things i think one of the promos you guys did it was like you guys like showing off the site and then you see some of your guys's characters 
Right. That was probably one of my favorite promos so far. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, oh, they're really going to, like, play with the whole fiction meets reality thing where it's like these are the characters based around the event and you're kind of invading their territory. Right. And the guests come in and are going to be, like, kind of like their victims, which I love. I think that's a great concept. Exactly. Um, it kind of ties back into the whole theory of, uh, you know, music, which our company represents, kind of c- crashing into, you know, horror. And that's what we put out in that commercial. So I'm cool. That, it's cool that you picked that up. That's that's honest. That's essentially the concept. Yeah. We bring ourselves, we find a venue in the woods. We think it's going to be this fun, festive music and, and foods, uh, drinks, you know, that type of thing. And of course, you know, we're invaded by monsters and ghouls. So, yeah, it's cool. Definitely. That seems like a really fun time. Um, what, what made you decide that you wanted to combine horror and music um, with, in, in this, within this event? Um, right. So for me personally, um, horror is, it's, it's an experience. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I don't think there's any other genre of uh, like what a movie that affects me or makes me feel some type of way like horror. Having me feel a suspense and a, um, uneasy or um, the thrill. And then um, same thing, kind of tying that into music. Music also makes me, it can, it can change my mood, whether I want to be sad, happy, excited, you know, all these different moods. So putting the whole, putting the whole, um, the music behind it, example being maybe like dubstep, for instance, I don't know. I'm, I'm big on, like when I work out, for instance, dubstep and you know, EDM high, house music, it gets my, you know, my blood going, my, my pump. And then you put muse, I mean, horror into that, the excitement, the suspense, it kind of, if you put two and two together, it's like that, that experience is, is unreal, yeah. you know, put yourself in an eerie place with some crazy music going on yeah, in the middle of the woods. It's like experience like no other, I feel. And um, there's a little bit more detail I'll go into yeah. that. Maybe like you'll spring a question, you know, later in this interview. I don't want to kind of like ruin everything at the moment, but yeah, it kind of just bring those two experiences together. I think is something special. Right, definitely. Yeah, exactly. And I'm on the same boat too. It's just just being able to like, you know, experience the horror side. And then right after, when you're finished with that, you continue like, you know, having fun with like the music, you see the DJs live, you know, getting that whole food experience, everything. You get every, it's like, it's endless. You can just, you can be there the whole time and have fun. That's what, that's what it's all about. You know? I think I like that a lot too. I'm, I'm glad you said that because obviously this year for everyone has been a very interesting year <laughs> to say yeah. the least. Yeah. Um, but yeah, when, for sure. when you're advertising stuff like this, I think it is going to draw a lot of people. I think a lot of people honestly just want to get out, do something, yeah. have a good time and maybe right. get a look back at what stuff used to be like. And I feel that with an event like this, I mean, right. Obviously, I, I think I want to know what ha- probably has been the biggest challenge, I guess, around COVID-19. Obviously, that's probably rose a lot of challenges for you guys. So what's been obviously the biggest challenge working around that? Um, it's I think the biggest challenge really um, was kind of the way that we uh, we market it. We don't want people to think that we're um trying to just get away with murder like no pun intended i'm just saying like i don't i don't think we're just trying to throw a crazy uh, event like a rager and, and you know have people thinking we're not taking the correct precautions because we are you know um at the end of the day it is it is a smaller uh, capacity event we're not hosting like for bigger corporations like universal or not very fun we're not hosting 40 50 000 people a night you know it's it's not even a quarter of that so we're able to micromanage and make sure that we're able to uh you know, play the, the guidelines correctly, regulate um, the, the rules of, you know, masks being worn and social distance. Um, one thing that was pretty cool or worked out in our favor was um, before, or not even before, but going into the process of throwing the event, um, we did want to come up with an X factor, something that would definitely uh, create another sort of scare factor going into the mazes. And one of that was, you know, let's, let's kind of limit um, the, the people um, in regards to how many people can go in a maze, you know, let's only make it two to three people. So you get that isolation factor, you know, for me personally, when I go in a maze, I kind of, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of like a mosh pit of people, like a whole line of people. You see everyone in front of you and back of you kind of, 
ruins for me and, and personally it ruins my experience. So going into that without COVID even being a thing, I was like, I want limited people in the maze at a time to create that isolation. So that worked in our favor as well. Um, going off that, I mean, the precautions we're taking, we're eliminating uh, doors. Uh, there's no curtains being put in front of you. Like everything's touchless in a sense, uh, in regards to like the mazes, um, even the way that we're going to be serving like drinks, for instance, you know, your traditional uh, drink stand or tiki bar, you go up, ask for a drink, get your drink given to you in a glass or a cup, but we're going to be having everything prepackaged, you know, disposable packaging. So you go up, you order, you take it. It could serve anywhere from like two to seven, you know, servings at a time, depending on what you order. And you take it, that, they take that to your, your standing table in which that's socially distanced. Like there's a lot of nit, nits and grits that we've taken consideration, but that was the heavy part was COVID of course, and how to let people know that, you know, we are taking the, the correct precautions to ensure everyone's safety and that we follow the right, the correct guidelines. And, you know, that whole hiccup about two weeks ago with, you know, LA County trying to say Halloween's canceled and all, we had to uh, get on the phone with tons of people, you know, to figure out what the workaround is, you know? So that was stressful as well. Um, other than that, man, uh, most of it, most of it is coming, coming into play pretty easy. It's pretty smooth sailing. Um, I think that the hype behind it has really, has really played its part. It's not even October yet. And I think, you know, we're, damn near almost about to hit capacity so we're, we're doing pretty well right definitely no i'm i'm loving what i'm hearing man i mean it's uh it's really uh honestly like i think that's everybody's biggest thing right now is like covid and everything but at the same time people want to have a good time people want to yeah. enjoy these things i mean I, I can speak for probably most of the haunt community when we say like you know when when these major haunts were shutting down it was like really depressing for everyone on top of oh, what, sure. was, what was going on in the world and you yeah. know, all that. So it, it was just a very depressing time. So, you know, channels like mine, you know, we, we go and cover these events and stuff. So it's always trying to find new things to try to cover and keep the coverage going for the fans. And right. one of the things, like I said, when I came across your guys' um, event was this will be, I think, the biggest indie haunt to debut ever and i think this honestly if this is a very successful thing i could see this going for years and becoming bigger and bigger each year definitely um, man that that is the goal that's that's definitely. Good. Longevity, you know? longevity, yeah longevity is yeah. big um and kind of tying back before we hop off the topic i think uh horror and music itself are both very therapeutic things you know what i mean um so i think that brings a lot more excitement for people as well knowing that there's a big event coming with the two things that probably help a lot of people out you know the big the, the the horror community for sure um i would i would assume you know kind of turns to horror as a therapeutic thing so it's i think we're doing you know a just it's a, it's a just event yeah speaking on music um uh, one of my questions uh regards to that is in the mazes will it be all original music or could we expect like a mix of uh you know like popular music in there yeah definitely um you can uh you can expect you can expect popular music being played essentially we do have djs mix you know throwing their halloween mixes inside i don't we haven't announced it yet and you might be like one of the very few that we've disclosed information to but one of the mazes is going to have uh who we're going to call the dj headmaster and he's going to be in the middle of the maze um spinning um so one of your turns is actually going to lead you into this this uh this area in which you find your headmaster at a at a higher level than you looking down at you spinning and I won't ruin any surprises, but you'll definitely, you know, be in for experience coming into that room. I think that's one of our um, unique or original ideas in regards to the way the mazes or the haunts, you know, it's kind of, it's a different look, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Another question then um, in, in regards to music, cause there will be music playing yeah. throughout the event. Um, and obviously there's going to be DJs, so will there be different DJs every night or is it going to be like the same uh, set throughout the event? Right. You could expect some of the same DJs to be um, making an appearance um, every night. Some nights will be substituted with with other DJs. Um, our DJ set, it's not a set list that will be announced. Um, however, there is a lineup um, in the works right now for the 31st only. So a Halloween night. Um, we haven't announced any um, news on that yet 
Uh, we plan to very soon, but yeah, we do have a lineup set for the 31st in which we will publicize. And other than that, um, the DJs on other select nights, it's just, uh, there's no, there's no like select list. Uh, there's no guarantee, same time, same night. It's just thrown in, thrown in the mix. Definitely. That's, that's a, brings an element of returnability, I think. Yeah, right. definitely. Yeah. Um, exactly. Question for both of you, actually. So I want to know what's been, of course, uh, other than, you know, the whole the, the COVID thing, I guess, rises a lot, a lot of challenges. But what's been, of course, what do you guys feel has been the most challenging on the haunt side? Take out the COVID part, but like just the haunt in general, what's been the most challenging for you both? Definitely. I'll let, Lawrence, you can take that one first. I feel like I've been speaking a lot. I'll, I'll take I'll get my answer after. <laughs> um. Let me see. The most challenging on the haunt side would be, honestly, I don't know, because, I mean, the additions we've been having, like, it's been very, very awesome. Like, the people we've been working with and uh, we've been additioning with, like, they're all great at uh, what they do. So it kind of makes the job easier for us. So, like, yo, um, when we and uh, Brandon talk about uh, who should be in the haunt, um, all the people that auditioned were awesome, you know what I mean? So it was, it made the job easier. And also like our, uh, our, our makeup artists are also amazing too. So it kind of, I'd say just like creating the direction of the maze would be the hardest part. But besides that, everything is uh, falling into place like you've been saying. Yeah. I'd say um, for me, um, I'm a creator, you know, so I'm, I'm a content creator. I'm a creative. I love horror and um, creator, artists, whatever. I come in like these, uh, I get like flustered sometimes because as a creator, you have so many ideas. They just come, they come at one time and, you know, you only, it's like, it's a five night event, but it's this year and then maybe next year will be different and the next year will be different. But this year is a theme, right? And you got to come up with that theme. You got to hit your, your scary zones with the theme you want, the mazes, and that's going to be it for this year. Obviously, it's it's not subject to change night tonight because you got to keep that, that dynamic going because it's gonna that's what's going to work for the business. But for me as a creator, it's like, man, I want to have, you know, I want to have like zombies in, in different ways or I want to include, um, you know, like maybe notorious, you know, stab, like stab killers or certain uh just certain scenes and certain sets it's hard for me to keep one idea going i just change i change up the idea of the mazes or the scare zone so often i think that's my biggest challenge is finding a concept and kind of sticking to it that's my problem um because i'm just i'm just so excited i'm so thrilled to be able it's one thing to, to experience other creators mazes but to throw your own is a whole different like realm of excitement you know because you're in charge of what people get to experience so it's tough it's really tough Definitely. So I have a question for both of you. Mm -hmm. Prior to, to deciding to put this on, like, have you guys um, like been a, been a fan of going to like events like Knots or Universal or yeah. any other of those haunt events? Definitely, I go multiple times a year. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's I get my fix on every yeah. every uh, every Halloween season. Yeah. I love it. I love it. I'm watching, you know, horror movies year round. I'm I'm looking for my scare fix all the time. So I'm I'm a big fan. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, me and Brandon grew up like we went to our, like our first Halloween horror nights together, probably growing up. So yeah, we've been going every every year, man. Yeah, we love his stuff. Get that right. Um, what would you guys say? Obviously, you know, this is the year I think for you guys to really go and shine, and because you know, you guys have per se, kind of less competition, you know, not to really worry about this year. This is your guys' year. This is the year of Indie Haunts, man. This is like, you know, everyone is looking up to you guys and stuff. Um, what would you guys say would your would you be your biggest influences, you know, planning this out and everything? Obviously, you guys talked about Horror Nights a little bit. You know, was there something where when you guys used to go back in the day, you guys were like, man, like, I want to do this, and I think we can do this. Definitely. Um, shoot. I mean, back when I was in middle school going to Horror Nights, there's just something that it's funny. It's, it's going to be weird. It's going to be a weird one. Or not really, but I mean, um, the year they had Saw Pigs, 
was it? They were like saw um, pigs with robes and they're all tall. For some reason, I was just short. I was in middle school, whatever. But the fear that that damn pig installed in me, like as I would go to Horror Nights, just definitely like, um, it was like an experience of, I, I don't know how to explain it. It was just, it was so fun, but it was so scary, you know? And I was just, I would just put together ideas of what I would have done if I was behind like this madness, you know? And that was at a younger age. Um, I think what it took was really like the confidence building to, to be able to go ahead and host an, um, an event like this capacity. So I think like prior to us getting on here, I was telling you that Lawrence and I have some prior experience with you know throwing events now. So I think in the midst of trying to find our creative niche of where we fit and then throwing the events and seeing where our failures are and learning from them, put it all together. And it's like, yeah, we've, we've learned our, from our mistakes in the past. Uh, this year is, if not the perfect year to host such an event. Um, dude, like if we're gonna take any risks during our, our journey through, you know, this business or the, uh, this, you know, this company, this is it right here. And, you know, we, we make this, it's, it's a quote or a quote that's been going on, but we say, you know, like all money in, you know, like we just all money in because we're willing to put into what we believe in this. I think this is it right here. Exactly. I feel like the, for me, for the love of music, like I love going to music festivals too. And, you know, with the season Halloween coming in, um, the season Halloween coming in and there's nothing really going on anymore. Like within, like we said, the big corporations, like it just opened up the opportunity of like, yo, like we can really throw like a really dope music um, event. But at the same time, you know, have that set, that, that scare, that scare part, the horror part within our event, which will obviously is the key factor, you know? Right. And just mixing those two together, just so big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, what I like about that too is you touched on music festivals. Um, me too. I'm like, I'm a huge, I, I love uh -huh. me. I, I'm a huge metal guy, punk, all that stuff. So I was going to like, you know, Oz uh -huh. Fest. I was going to like all these punk festivals. Oh, oh. So you guys, in a way, are kind of bringing back not only a haunt, like, this is a really, out of all the ones that I've seen, this is probably the biggest this season. And you guys are bringing back that nostalgia of the big time haunts, but at the same time, you're bringing back, in a way, sort of like a music festival for, you know, people who love that stuff. I mean, I can probably speak for a lot of people, yeah. right? It's like, yeah. it, I could probably speak for a lot of people when saying a lot of people miss that, that stuff. A lot of mm -hmm. people miss going to seeing live music. You know, a lot of people miss going to these events. A lot of people miss getting scared at these events. And I think you guys are yeah. tackling two things that people have been wanting for months now, which I believe that is probably yeah. insane yeah, exactly. for you guys. Like, yeah, yeah, for sure. And we're doing it in a safe way, too, you know what I mean? So, yeah, we can't sure emphasize that enough. Safe. Yeah. I want Definitely. to make sure everybody has a good time. <laughs> And I, I'm glad you keep advertising the safe way because I think a lot of people's biggest always questions is, okay, how are they going to follow COVID guidelines? Yes, they are, you know, having music. They're having DJs. Yes, they're having, you know, uh, mazes and scare zones. But mm -hmm. it's at a safe, um, obviously, COVID guideline uh, way where they're right. going to make sure yeah. all the audience, the, all the guests are, are safe. Everyone's exactly. wearing masks, social distancing. So... I think that is an important thing. And, mm -hmm. and honestly, exactly. like I said, when I found out about this, this was something I couldn't miss. Whether the major haunts were going on or not this year, I love to try new things. And uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I've been stressing it enough with my community. Exactly. I, mean, I think a, a few weeks back, we actually made a video, you know, talking about the event further into detail of what we knew so far. And... Now having you two on, it's given us even more of a behind-the-scenes insight of what's been going into uh, not only building it, but, of course, the, the, the whole creative process of how this right. has come to life. You guys are yeah. pretty much like Dr. Frankenstein bringing your Frankenstein's monster to life. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. That's exactly what it's like. Yep. <laughs> it's our baby. We're carrying it to the, to the exactly. max. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> one thing you guys do know, obviously. 100%, man. Those freaking scumbags over there at TLEV. 
Um, we're hosting our, our Try Not To Get Scared Challenge there this year because we felt out of every event that was going on, this was the event. And if you guys have a very successful year and you guys plan on doing this multiple years, I think I want to home that challenge at uh, Welcome to Hellfest because, you know, you can go to Horror Nights, you can go to Knots and stuff, but it's it's different, you know... I think what the advantage TLEV always had was they would go to these events multiple nights and they'd memorize the scares. I'm like, boys, this is one night, a new event. We don't know what's happening. You yeah. may have had the advantage in the past, but, you know, no one has the advantage this year. And I couldn't have <laughs> think of, of a perfect haunt to host it at, at Hellfest. Uh, I could tell you this right now. I'm walking in as champ. I'm walking out as champ. I may be scared, but... I'm gonna make sure that little guy gets scared even more. So, how do you guys how do you guys tally that up? Like, what's so, the process? When we record, when it when it comes down to editing, well, we we try to keep in the moment. We try to keep score best we can, and we got to be honest with it because okay. you, know, you don't want to cheat, obviously. Yeah. But in the moment, it's one of those things where you got to kind of yeah. remember when you got scared, or you watch the other person try to get scared. But when editing comes down, that's when you really can tally up like the real total, no matter what. Um, okay. I've came out, called them out, and then he set the time and place. Obviously, your guys' event is that time, is that place. And I think the odds are in my favor. Yes, sir. I like to hear that. Confident man. I am. Very much. We're meeting up face to face, and uh, I'm gonna call him out even more. But I can tell you this, TLB. <laughs> I think Hellfest is going to be the place where you lose for the second year in a row. So. No. <laughs> that was a little shameless plug of trying not to get scared challenge. We're gonna, we're gonna kick TLB's ass. And it's I, I get a question for you both. Uh, actually, yeah. it's a little bit more off topic, but it, it'll, it'll still fit in. Um, okay. Would you guys consider you? Do you guys get scared relatively easy? I like, um, you know, these like these horror events. Uh, oh, at the horror events? No, I at don't. The horror I, events? I, yeah, no, I don't. No, I think. Uh, really. Exactly. I like yeah, to. Uh, I'm, I mean, usually when I go with my girlfriend and stuff, you know, they get they're more terrified than me. So I like to uh, spend more time holding them back kind of rather than that. like join, like yeah. getting the, the fix. I think I'm, I'm honestly walking into like the mazes with a big smile on my face. Every time I walk in, it's, I think, uh, I don't see, honestly, I'm it's confident, just, like, I'm just, confident uh, in my, in our event. I think yeah, if yeah, I were yeah. to go through our mazes by myself, I think I would get scared. We might, uh, yeah, for sure. have to have some, I think the fact that we're isolating so many, we're isolating people like, yeah, I think that's going to be the biggest the factor. Guy. I think the the space alone, that's and scary, yeah. some, like a, a kind of a visual, right? Is it's so it's so dark. It's it's in the woods. I mean, there's there's sounds, there's creaks, sounds, branches, winds. Like it's the place itself sets the tone. No no problem, right? And then you throw in all the extras. You know what we do. I mean. Going in, I mean, I, I personally would love to make it like a one-person experience. I, I'd rather have a quality of people that are willing to wait and go through it by themselves than like a crazy amount, just because I would love that genuine scare that, you know, it's that going through um, the mazes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. the place, the place is, the maze is great. Like, I mean, like dark, time, yeah. yeah, it's, it's, it's dark. It's in the woods. Like I said, I mean, um, you have scares coming out of who knows, like who knows where, um, it's, it's definitely, I don't want to give it too much away, but just know that it's definitely going to be, it's going to be, people, a lot of people are going to get scared. Little, like the, I think like the average, like most people will be scared rather than the people that won't. Hear that, Taylor Do you think, as, as creators of the event, do um, you think you're going to have a target on your back where these actors are going to try to want to, like, have competition by trying to get you guys scared and catching you guys off guard? I'm sorry, one more time? Okay, yeah, of course. Um, I said, the, uh, as creators of the event, do you think the uh, scare actors are going to be wanting to like try to scare you and catch you off guard? Oh, a hundred percent. I think a hundred percent. What, yeah, what's sure. really cool though is, um, you know, our like I said, our the dynamic of the, of the event we're uh, we're a smaller capacity compared to the bigger corporations. So 
uh, we have, generally we're a team really you know it's a smaller it's a smaller team we're able to, like I said to micromanage and we know each and individual scare we know everyone that's going to be working with us from you know marketing to production everyone so it's cool because we all you know you can tell we're starting to build a little camaraderie like every every time we meet every time we speak so coming up to the event they'll definitely have like a we'll have bullseyes or targets on our back when, when we're going through the mazes they're definitely going to come up with some extreme stuff yeah. to get to us <laughs> for sure yeah definitely uh if sammy was going he'd probably be the biggest bullseye on his back <laughs> i'm scared of everything <laughs> <laughs> You you probably probably YouTube get more scared easily, like, right? That's why he's every year when we do the challenge, I'm like, all right, you can wait off to the sidelines. I gotta actually win because if you're in we'll win the game for us. If you yeah. if, I, if you're in the challenge, man, I'm I'm done. <laughs> um, no, but I'm I'm liking what I'm hearing thus far. I mean, we've obviously covered a lot of behind the scenes and stuff, and yeah. we've we've talked about what you guys are pumped for. I I need to know what are some of your guys's uh favorite horror movies maybe influences that helped maybe designed uh design this event this year or some of like the, the big ones um for me let's see uh evil dead is a big one that's that's honestly that's a huge one evil dead taking it back to like the the classics wow. um i mean this is a given exorcist is huge um that plays a big role as well um i don't know i feel from the people that i speak with for the newer genre of of horror movies like The Conjuring, Insidious. I get a lot of negative um, review on it, but I personally really like them. I, I like the, the series. I like the collection yeah. of both Conjuring and Insidious. So put all those together. That's my select list, at least. Mm -hmm. um, those are the ones that really get my uh, my yeah. blood going and like the suspense building. You know, nothing against the notorious killers like Jason, Michael, and Freddy, but um, those are a little bit more comical to me, I think. Um, the, the ones I just listed, though, kind of put my get my hairs up a little bit. So that would be my my influence. What you got for us, so, Lawrence? For me, so specifically, Lawrence? number one would have to be The Shining. Oh, The Shining. That, okay. I said that. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, we hear you good. Sorry, it's kind of lagging. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, the number one movie for me would be The Shining. I think it's just. And also insidious too, like the that red door, and like it kind of gives that type of a uh, artsy look. That R2 main vibe, you know what I mean? That we're trying to, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like so, yeah, that. Yeah, man, insidious and the shining for me specifically. Love that. I mean, insidious probably when it first came out was like terrifying to me, man. That the bride. Yeah, yeah. The freaking music, the that music, music, man. The, oh music my God. the bride, and yeah, bro. The, the, it's just so dark the whole way. Yeah, it is, and the, you know the red faced demon, yeah. terrifying. I mean, you, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night thinking he's probably gonna be on your ceiling corner in the dark, you know, and it's just like he loved it. Yeah, it, it, I saw it in theaters. That was the best experience. Yeah. Yeah. that yeah. and the Conjuring. Yeah, um, I can speak for Sammy. I know he he is not a fan of the nun. Yeah, that was very, that was kind of disappointing. Um, I, haven't no, seen the the I haven't seen the nun. I the Conjuring two was terrifying. <laughs> I think I don't know about Conjuring the nun. Conjuring two is really good to me. Yeah. The nun had its moments, but it wasn't like the best in the series. Can you tell us? But I think from what I'm hearing, influences. I mean, you guys are going back to the classics. You know, Evil Dead, uh, Exorcist, Shining. You know, these are all movies that not only were some of the greatest horror movies ever made, but psychologically messed a lot of people up. Um, yeah. And I think that's awesome, man. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. That's awesome. Was there any, uh, when you guys were designing that, speaking of those kind of references to those horror movies, uh, did you guys try hiding little Easter eggs from each, you know, these horror movies that you're like, we got to throw at least a little nod to this because this is a huge influence for us? Yes, yes, and no. So we're not going to be using uh, Easter eggs off of popular movies. We're going to have our own Easter eggs um, themselves, and you'll find more info on that closer to the event. Um, but we definitely do want to keep, you know, keep our eye out as you're getting scared. You know, there's certain challenges and and looks. I mean, I think um, if you look on the way our flyers made, there is giveaways too. So we haven't really given to depth as to what are those giveaways, like what entails, like. Uh, 
qualifications of like what you'll get on the giveaway or what it's consisted of but um there's there's certain things that we will definitely be implementing in the mazes that um you should be looking out for i'm uh, i'm feeling it i can't wait i am if you guys could see me in person right now, my hairs are sticking up because I'm super excited for this event. Like I really yeah. am. <laughs> and obviously like, man, I, I'm happy. like I keep like I keep saying we you know we're doing trying not to get scared challenge there. You know, that's gonna be fun. It's a new event for both of us, one night only. And you know, it's gonna be fun. I think a lot of people are gonna get a, a, a kick out of this event and I think now more than ever, we need something like this because, yeah. like I keep saying, man, it's been a depressing year, and yeah. everyone needs to get scared on Halloween season, uh, whether it be horror movies. Uh, exactly, I mean, man. This is the, this is the year. Yeah, it's everyone needs to get scared. Everyone needs to get scared. I mean, mm. that's why Halloween is here. This is why we go to these events every single year. Yes, we yeah. want to be scared. We want to enjoy something. We like that adrenaline of being scared um for all those who are just finding out about this for the first time do you want to give the audience a brief synopsis of what they can expect this year at hellfest definitely um let's go over like a brief summary here we go uh you'll find two two large mazes to find your way out of um one of the things that we're gonna announce soon so i'll give it away is one of the mazes actually has three different exits um you come to you kind of exit out of the may the, this maze um in which you go across into another um sanction you find three pathways um listed as you know different options you pick your pathway each one offers a different a different um scare yeah. tactic um i already let you guys know that uh you can find a dj headmaster in one of the mazes as well um, for all of our guests purchasing VIP tickets or a cabana with your party, you will be getting an exclusive scare trail. Um, that is also um, a pretty exciting experience within itself. Um, shoot, you'll find little things too, miscellaneous things, you know, photo booths, um, you know, scare, like some scare sets that you can take pictures at. Um, you know, of course, the stage with where you'll find DJs, you know, the the cuisines you'll find, uh, drinks. We also have um, a Ouija board set up. That's another thing. Um, you can go get your Ouija board experience on. It's also that'll also be very fun. All around, you're gonna be, you're gonna be surprised. You know, you're gonna be turning left and right. Like, you know, what what's going on? Um, I think that there's gonna be tons of surprises. Um, I think. Shoot, the biggest thing is it's a different event. It's something that you haven't been to before. And that's why we're really excited. And I can take, I, I say that with a lot of confidence. It's definitely a new, it's a very unique event. Right. Um, so for all those who are interested, obviously go follow them, follow them on Instagram. What is it? WTH. WTH. Oh, yes. WTH on Instagram, Fest? WTH Fest. WTH Fest. WTH Fest. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, tickets are being sold on three platforms. Like we have our own website, uh, welcome to Uh We're being, or we have tickets being sold on Eventbrite and uh, also on Fever. Definitely. The event opens up Thursday, yeah. October 22nd, 7 p.m. Tickets start at $55. Um, right. And the event's going the 22nd, 23rd, 24th, 30th, and 31st. Um, it is a very uh, limited time yeah. event, so make sure you don't miss it. This is something you're going to want to check out, something we've been constantly advertising here on the Nights of Horror, something we're very excited for. And for the first time uh, ever, a new haunt that will be hosting Try Not To Get Scared Challenge Year 3. I am super stoked, guys. Thank you so much for, of course, the background and a, a brief behind the scenes of what we can expect this year. I hope our audience got a little bit more info, and I hope that they attend this because this is going to be... Like I keep saying, I think the biggest independent haunt of the season. And I think you guys are going to go far. I think you guys are going to go for years to come and just get bigger and bigger every season. So I'm looking forward to that. Appreciate that, man. Thank you. Thank you Honestly, thank you. thank you so much. Yes, yep. yes. Uh, you know, so, and thank you for having us, man. This is a, I love the podcast. Awesome. Hey, man. 
You know what? You guys are welcome back anytime. I'm glad you guys said yes because I would I was loving what I was seeing on social media advertisements, and I had to, I had to talk with you guys. I had to get inside the brains of the uh, the creators. So yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, guys. Obviously, links will be in the bio for everything. So get tickets. Follow them on Instagram. Uh, keep up to date. Um, they gave us so much info, and I'm just super excited. Uh, if I can end it with this, obviously TLEV. Can't take the title away from us, man. <laughs> I was the one who turned you guys on to this event. And I'm going to walk out with the title. I got my advocate, Samuel Martinez, coming through. And got your witnesses too, man. We're, 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 we're going in. We're going in. We want we want blood. We're going in for blood. And we're oh, gonna, yeah. You attend to that for sure. Oh, yeah. We're, <laughs> we're going to walk out. Come hell or high water, we're walking out that champion. We're going to go to hell and back just to keep that title. So, boys, 100%. you guys got a big target on your backs because we're walking in, champ. We're walking out, champ. That's just simple as that. So I'll leave uh, one more, one more, not a hint, but what to expect. Uh, your travel up to the location itself, uh, what you can imagine is uh, all you'll be able to see ahead of you is what your headlights allow you to see. I think that's. I think that that itself is also very, very uh, um, unique in regards to like going to an event. You really are going like into the hills, like the woods. So it's it's pretty pretty cool. You really you really gave us the Evil Dead experience right there. Oh, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, gentlemen, thank you guys so much. I know you guys have probably been really busy lately with, of course, putting this on, setting this up. I know it's starting to get. Uh, closer and closer to the event. So we really appreciate your guys' time. Again, you guys are welcome back anytime to talk about the event. Uh, and we can't wait to meet up with you guys when the event officially opens and take a look at Hellfest, man. I'm, I'm super stoked. Can't wait. And again, like I keep saying to anyone out there, especially you guys and all the people who are putting on Home Haunts, thank you for saving Halloween because a lot of us were very scared of what we were going to turn to this year and how we were going to celebrate it. And because of people like you, you're keeping that Halloween spirit alive, and we appreciate that. Yes, sir. We appreciate you guys 100%. Awesome. Awesome. I, yeah. I can't stress you, this enough, man. I got, I got some goosebumps right now, man. I'm ready. I want Hellfest yeah. to come already, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> sir. All right. Uh, it, it's gonna, We're going to have fun, man. We're going to have fun. It's going to be fun, man. It's going to be fun. So thank you guys, ladies and gentlemen, yeah. for watching the podcast today, listening to it on Spotify, wherever you listen to uh, podcasts available to you. Uh, we got to sit down with the, the creative team behind uh, Welcome to Hellfest, and we want you guys to go experience this. So buy your tickets, follow them on Instagram, all that good stuff. And obviously, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that like button and that subscribe button and that bell notification. Be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Uh, I'm Anthony. It's your boy, Sam. It's your boy, Sam. We got Brandon. We got Laura. Brandon. Yeah. It is Hellfest season, boys. Right. We cannot wait. <laughs> We will be there. Hope you guys are there. And we will see you guys in the next podcast. Thank Thanks. you. Sir.